If backpacking were a college degree, Bangkok would have to be the 101 course. Not only is Bangkok the most visited city in the world, it is also considered the global epicenter of backpacking culture. No shock there really, given that it sits at the heart of mainland Southeast Asia, boasts affordable prices, serves delicious local cuisine, and is home to some of the most hospitable people you'll ever meet. Hello there, poor traveler! We are Vince and Josh. Welcome to the English version of our Bangkok travel guide. In this video, we'll share with you all the tips and updates we've collected as of our last visit. If you prefer the Tagalog version, check out our separate video which we published earlier this year. Before we begin, don't forget to like this page if you're an FB or subscribe to this channel if you're on YouTube and tap the bell icon to get notified when we upload new travel videos. Bangkok is the capital and the commercial, economic, and political center of Thailand. The name Bangkok is an exonym, something that foreigners use. Thais call it Krung Tep, meaning City of Angels, short for its official name, Krung Tep Mahanakon, which is also a shortened version of its full ceremonial name. But wait, I can't pronounce it well, so I'll let our tour guide Jasmine say it. Okay, the full name of Bangkok is Krung Tep Mahanakon, Amon Ratanakosin. Whoa, that's a mouthful. Don't worry, you can keep calling it Bangkok. By the way, as early as now, I want to apologize because I'll probably murder a lot of the Thai pronunciations as we go along. At first glance, Bangkok appears as your typical highly urbanized metropolis. But a closer look reveals it remains very much in touch with its past. The city's roots as the capital can be traced back to 1782 when King Rama I, after the fall of Ayutthaya in 1767, ordered the people to move south and establish a new center at a more militarily strategic location along the Chao Phraya River. Many of Bangkok's most visited attractions today were built under King Rama I, including the Grand Palace Complex and the other temples that will be discussed later in this video. The official language is Thai. For newly exposed non-native speakers, it can be quite intimidating, especially its lengthy words. It's also a tonal language. The meaning changes with the intonation. But many road and establishment signs are also written in Latin alphabet. English isn't normally spoken. You'll encounter taxi drivers and vendors who cannot speak English at all. But most younger locals can. And what the Thais lack in English fluency, they make up for with their friendly attitude towards tourists. The official currency is the baht. 100 baht is roughly 2.9 dollars or 2.72 euro or 3.9 Singapore dollars. I'll get deeper into currency and money matters later in this video. Time zone is plus 7 year round. No daylight saving time observed. Same time zone as Vietnam, Cambodia, and Laos. Thailand in general is 1 hour behind the Philippines, Singapore, and Malaysia. Buddhism is the predominant religion practiced by almost 93% of the population. Most others identify with Islam, Christianity, Hinduism, Sikhism, and Confucianism. The most common power sockets are sort of a combination of types A and C. They have two holes that can accept both flat and round pins, the shape of two doorknobs or rubber stamps facing each other. This type of socket can take plugs that are types A, C, and F. If your plug has three pins, you will be needing an adapter. In Thailand, travelers are only required to present the usual border requirements like passport and visa if applicable. Foreigners holding passports issued by the Philippines, Singapore, Indonesia, Malaysia, and the United States, the United Kingdom, Germany, and 40 plus other countries can enter Thailand visa free, provided that they stay shorter than 30 days. However, Visitors must have the following upon entry. First, a valid passport with at least 6 months validity. Return or onward ticket. At least 10,000 baht per person or 20,000 baht per family or equivalent in other currencies. Cash. For tourist visa holders, that's 20,000 baht per person or 40,000 baht per family. Again, it doesn't need to be in baht. It can be any currency as long as it has the equivalent value and it's in cash. Now you might be asking, are these really necessary? In theory, yes, it is the law. 
but it's not implemented all the time. The vast majority of travelers are not asked or checked. Our team have been in and out of Thailand recently, but none of us were asked how much we carry. But just because we, you, or someone you know wasn't checked before, doesn't mean you won't be checked this time. It's always best to just comply, just in case. As for the pandemic-related requirements, as of this recording, there are none. The Thai government has lifted COVID-19 restrictions for tourists. But because health policies change fast, especially these extraordinary times, please double-check the latest rules with the Thai authorities and the airline before your trip. Bangkok is vast, and many of the key attractions are spread apart. Thankfully, there are also plenty of neighborhoods that are ideal places to stay. Take a look at this map of downtown Bangkok. Here are the areas which have great concentration of lodging options. But which is the best? Well, that depends on why you're in Bangkok in the first place. If you're backpacking or after Bangkok's wild nightlife, the Taosan area should be your top choice. Taosan Road is loud, but it is where backpackers from around the world congregate. The area also harbors countless hostels and other lodging options for budget travelers. It's also easily accessible from the Grand Palace and the city's popular temples. If you're here to shop till you drop, the Pratunam and Siam areas are ideal because of the many bargain centers and shopping malls around. If you wish to experience modern Bangkok, the Sukhumvit area has a lot of dining, shopping, and clubbing options, including many of its famed rooftop bars. It's also where most expats are based, creating a more cosmopolitan vibe. If you're a foodie, Silom and Chinatown are home to some of the best but affordable food spots in the city. Silom is the business district with the Lumpini Park, Bangkok's largest green space at its center, ensuring a balance between quiet and chaos. The Banglampu area near the Democracy Monument and Kaosan Road also has a great selection of Michelin-listed pocket-friendly restaurants. If you're on a budget, Siam and Silom have a good selection of hostels and budget hotels. Especially the areas around BTS National Stadium Station or MRT Ratchatui in Siam and BTS Saladeng and MRT Silom in Silom. From any of these, most of the attractions are easily accessible, ensuring savings on transportation. Cheap food spots are also scattered around these districts. On our most recent visit, we tried booking a place near Kaosan Road for the first time. While it was indeed fun, especially because we stayed at a party hostel, I have to admit that it's not as convenient as Silom or Siam or even Sukhumvit. The Kaosan or Banglampu area is a 30-minute walk away from the nearest BTS station which is Samyot. The only consolation is that it's close to a pier where you can board a boat to get to key attractions along Chao Praia River. Other than that, Tuk Tuk and Taxi are the main transportation options to and from Kaosan. That said, I can still recommend staying there especially if you wish to have a taste of Bangkok's backpacking culture. If you prefer to stay somewhere easily accessible, the Silom and Siam areas are my top recommendations. We used to stay in these areas in our past visits. Both have a number of BTS and MRT stations and offer a little bit of everything that the other districts have in store. Good food, shopping, and nightlife. Bangkok is one of the busiest and most connected cities in the world. If you're living in a major city, chances are there's a direct flight from where you are to Bangkok. The city is served by two airports. Suwanapum Airport, the newer and bigger airport serving most airlines except a few low-cost carriers. It's situated east of the city proper, roughly one hour away. And Donmuang Airport, serving mostly Air Asia, Nok Air, Thai Lion Air, and Tiger Air Taiwan. It lies north of the city center, 45 minutes to an hour away depending on traffic conditions. Both airports are connected to Bangkok's growing train system. Taking the train is often the fastest way to get to the city proper because you'll be dodging Bangkok's infamous traffic jams. If you're coming from Suwanapum Airport, follow the signs to the airport rail link or ARL at the basement. There's a train every 15 minutes from 6 a.m. to 12 midnight or every 10 minutes within the peak hours. The ARL is connected to the city's BTS SkyTrain at two stations, Makasan and Payatai, which is the last station. Travel time is around 25 minutes. Depending on where your hotel is located, you can just switch lines at either of these two stations. To Sukhumvit or Silom area, you can connect at either Makasan or Payatai station. Find out what the closest station is to your hotel 
and transfer to either the MRT Blue Line at Makasan Station, then to Pechaburi Station, or to BTS Sukhumvit Line or the Light Green Line at Payatai Station. To Siam area, alight at Payatai Station and transfer to BTS Sukhumvit Line or Light Green Line. Catch a train bound for Keha and get off at Siam Station or whatever station is closest to your final destination. And if you're staying in Kausan area, alight at Makasan Station, transfer to MRT Blue Line at Pechaburi Station and get off at Samyut Station. From here, take a cab, tuk-tuk or grab to Kausan Road. If you're coming from Don Muang Airport, just walk to Don Muang Station along the SRT Dark Red Line. This station is fairly new, opened only in August 2022. Then, board a train bound for Bangsue and alight there at the last stop. Transfer to the MRT Blue Line. If you're staying in Silom area, you'll be glad to know that most stations in Silom are along the Blue Line. So just get off at the station closest to your hotel. And if you're staying in Siam, alight at Chatuchak Park Station and transfer to BTS Sukhumvit Line or Light Green Line at Mochit Station. Catch a train bound for Keha and get off at Siam Station or whatever station is closest to your final destination. There are also direct buses from Don Muang Airport to select destinations around Bangkok. If you intend to go to Mochit Bus Terminal or to BTS Mochit Station, take Bus A1. If you're headed for Victory Monument, take Bus A2. If you wish to go to Kaosan Road by bus, take Bus A4. The fare is 30 to 50 baht depending on the route. If you wish to go to Kaosan area by bus, alight at Samyot Station along the same blue line and take a cab, tuk-tuk, or grab to Kaosan. Actually, if you're staying in Kaosan area, whether you're coming from Suwanapum Airport or Don Muang Airport, you'll need to take the train to Samyot Station and then take a cab from there. But if you're a group with a heavy luggage in tow, it's best to just take a cab or grab from the airport straight to your hotel. But if you opt for a cab, always insist on using the meter. Here are the taxi rates. The fare is around 400 baht plus a 50 baht airport surcharge and 75 baht highway toll fee if you're coming from Suwanapum Airport. If you're taking grab, the fare is 530 to 600 baht inclusive of toll fee or highway fee. This is based on the experience of our team. Travel time is 45 minutes to 1 hour depending on traffic. Although it is not as sweat-free as in Hong Kong or Singapore, commuting in Bangkok is quite easy. That said, vehicular traffic can get crazy during rush hour. Getting around via public transportation means using one or more of these four modes. First, the train. Bangkok's train system is fast and reliable and will take you to many attractions throughout the city. Many of them are located close to a BTS or MRT station. Also, it allows you to bypass traffic jams especially during rush hours. Although connected at a few stations, take note that the BTS and the MRT are completely separate systems run by different managements and use different tickets. The fares for both are similar ranging from 16 to 52 baht. Most stations have a counter that can break your large bills and the ticket machine that accepts bills. For a more convenient journey on BTS, you may use a rabbit card which is their version of a stored value ticket or a one-day pass which can give you unlimited rides for one day. You can also travel by boat. The boat is the best option for you if you intend to visit the Grand Palace Complex, just get off at Tachang Pier. Or Wat Po, just get off at Tatian Pier. You can also use the boat to visit Kaosan Road, just get off at Pra Artit. Yes, you can visit all those in one day just using the boat. Both the Chao Praia tourist boat and the cheaper orange flag boat will make a stop at these key tourist attractions. The fare for the tourist boat is 50 baht for a single ride or 180 baht for a day pass. For the orange flag boat, the fare is 15 baht no matter where you alight. If my destination is too far from a train or boat station, I would just hail a cab. A ride costs more than in Manila but nowhere near the rates in Hong Kong or Singapore. The flag down is 35 baht and the average ride within the city is probably around 100 to 200 baht. You might encounter cab drivers who take advantage of tourists by not using the meter and then overcharging. If the driver refuses to use the meter, just get off the vehicle. Know that all cabs in Bangkok must use the meter. Many of these opportunistic drivers wait for tourist passengers at popular attractions like temples and Kaosan Road. 
You may also ride the tuk-tuk. However, I didn't even bother. They are very expensive, even more expensive than cabs, and many are involved in scams. If you really want to try for the heck of it, just agree on the price first. Whatever mode of transportation you choose, staying connected is extremely helpful. Because BTS and MRT are separate systems, they use separate apps and separate tickets. There are plenty of Bangkok train apps online but I use this one, the Explore Bangkok app which combines these two systems and show you the fastest way to get from point A to point B, including the transfers. Although there are English translations, language barrier still exists. When taking the cab and asking for directions, I always find myself showing the pinned location on Google Maps and they get it right away, instead of me struggling to say the name. You can purchase a data SIM card or rent a pocket Wi-Fi via Cloak. On our last trip, I reserved the data SIM card which is the cheapest and most convenient option. Two data providers are available, TrueMove and DTAP. Both can give you 15 gig of data, good for up to 16 days. You can pick it up at the airport and you're good to go. We'll add links to where you can purchase them in the description. As mentioned, the official currency is the Thai Bat, which is roughly 2.89 USD, 2.7 Euro, or 3.9 SGD. Money changers at the airport have poor rates so if you really need to convert at the airport, exchange only a little or enough to get you to the city center. At the city center, find a super rich Thailand branch which has the best rates. Just make sure it's a legit super rich branch. Most money changers in the city accept US dollars, Euro, Singapore dollars, Malaysian ringgit, and even Philippine peso. Or you can withdraw from local bank's ATM. Here are some of the banks that we tried ranked according to which gave us the best rates. But keep in mind that usually, they charge a 220 baht service fee per transaction, so if you're gonna withdraw, do it one time big time so you won't be charged over and over again. The most common mode of payment is cash. Although some restaurants and hotels accept credit cards, smaller establishments still prefer cash. Here's the list of the prices of common items that you will need for a comfortable budget stay in Bangkok. Bear in mind that the figures are in Thai baht. A bottled water costs 6 to 12 baht, while a bottle of soda, around 20 baht. You can find a tasty 7-Eleven rice meal for 40 to 55 baht. And if you're doing a Big Mac test at McDonald's, an a la carte Big Mac costs 128 baht. If you're on a budget, you can try street food. Grilled meat costs 10 to 30 baht per stick depending on the type of meat and pad thai costs 50 to 60 baht. Noodle soup around 50 to 70 and rice meals 50 to 100 baht. And these are the entrance fees collected at some of the most popular tourist attractions. For transportation, the base fare at BTS or MRT is 16 to 52 baht. And the taxi flag down rate is 35 baht. If you're taking Grab within the city, it usually costs 100 to 280 baht depending on the distance and traffic conditions. And these are the common rates of the tours including the transfers. Tipping is not mandatory in Bangkok but it is surely appreciated. When eating at sit-down restaurants, a tip of 10% of the bill should be fine. You can also just round off your bill. For example, if your bill is 135 baht, you can leave 150 baht. Same with cabs. If the meter is 105, round it off to 110 or 120. At hotels, you can give 20 to 50 baht to the porter who carries your luggage to your room depending on the number of pieces. For a massage, a 50 baht tip will do. And for full day tour guides, at least 200 baht is acceptable. Bangkok is generally safe and tourist friendly. My only frustration is that it has more than its share of scams targeting tourists, so always be careful. They are more organized than they appear. One widespread modus operandi involves people loitering by the gates of temples and approaching tourists. I almost fell for this on my first trip. They are very friendly and they usually introduce themselves as teachers. They claim that the site you're about to visit is closed because it is a holiday or there's an event and that they know a more beautiful place that is not on tourist maps. Then they hail a random tuk-tuk or boat which isn't random at all because the driver is actually part of the scam. And they will tour you around. You will be taken to a jewelry store selling overpriced gems and accessories. The tuk-tuk or boat may also overcharge you for the ride. 
In Kaosan area, you might also find tourist agents selling all sorts of transportation tickets that turn out to be less than what they promise. For example, you may find establishments offering direct buses to CM Rep Cambodia but most of them are not really direct as they involve switching vehicles at one point during the trip. And worse, some of these buses stop at travel agencies that will sell you fake visa. Pat Pong is also notorious for scams. You'll be invited by barkers to a club to see a ping pong show or other mind-blowing presentations to say the least. They'll say the show is free but you must order a drink. But here's the catch. The drink is ridiculously overpriced and they won't let you go unless you pay. As in any other city, be careful and vigilant. If something sounds too good to be true, it probably is. When is the best time to visit Bangkok? November to February when the temperature and precipitation levels are kind and low. But because of the pleasant weather, it is also the peak season. High season begins in November and ends in April around Songkran Festival or the Thai New Year. If you're visiting within this period, prepare to share the city with millions of other tourists. Bangkok could have been a year-round destination if it weren't for the bouts of rain and flooding problems, which is why it is best to avoid the wettest months. Rainy season is from May to October, but the wettest months are from September to October. We have tried traveling to Bangkok in January, July, August, September, October, and November, and we can tell you that the precipitation level can definitely affect your overall travel experience. We've been stranded in some sites because of torrential rains and flooding and ended up wasting much of our time. Whether you're a foodie, a shopaholic, a nature lover, a history buff, a culture vulture, or a party animal, Bangkok has something for you. We'll enumerate them in our next video so don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the ring icon if you're on YouTube or follow and like this page if you're on Facebook. If you're feeling generous, tip us! Just visit www.theportraveler.net slash tip and we'll give you a shout out in one of our future videos just like our tipsters for the week. If you have questions, make good use of the comment section below. You can also follow or message us on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok. Just look for at the poor traveler single L. And if you have a Spotify account, follow and tune in to the Poor Traveler Podcast. That's all for now. Remember, plan smart, travel safe, and make every trip worth it.